Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash pro revenge. In today's episode, evil stepfather gets what he deserves. Downstairs neighbors wouldn't turn down music, nuked them from orbit. Nice Audi, dude. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Evil stepfather gets what he deserves. I made a comment on another post, got way more upvotes and comments than expected, and you slash alex28-3, and you slash draked1 suggested I tell a more in-depth version of the story here. When I was 15, my mom started dating a man she met on a dating website. I didn't like him the first time I met him, and two months later he moved into the house. About three weeks after he moved in, he took my skateboards, self-built halfpipe, ramps, BMX bike, ice hockey gear, and many other things to the dump one day while I was at school. He said he did this because he didn't want all of my crap cluttering up his garage. Maybe two months later he punched me in the stomach for the first time because I got up from the dinner table without asking to be excused. From there it escalated into full-fledged beatdowns for the smallest perceived slight to his authority. One day he decided to take my extensive Pokemon card collection, even more extensive comic book collection, my Game Boy and PS2 with all the assorted games, and my fantasy and sci-fi book collection, and got rid of it all because 15-year-old boys should be playing football and baseball, not being a FAOT nerd playing with Pokemon cards and reading comics and books. I would like to add that he was a middle school teacher, and in his off time refereed and umpired local middle and high school sports games. My mom never intervened, and in fact acquiesced when he demanded that she stop giving me lunch money, because the little shit will just spend it on comics and other gay shit. One day, I took maybe three dollars and change out of his change jar, so that I could buy a slice of pizza and some fruit punch during lunch at school, because I was tired of being hungry. My twin sister was always a bit of an asshole, and frequently blackmailed me into doing her chores from a young age. I was fed up and refused to do something, so she told him what I had done. This man actually called the police and pressed a larceny charge against me, and once the police had left, proceeded to beat me senseless. At that point I ran away. When the cops found me and returned me to my home, I found out that he had been trying to talk my mom into sending me away to military school or something of that nature. I ran away again, and between having run away several times, and the larceny charge ended up turning 16 in juvenile detention. I spent the next couple years miserable and afraid, frequently contemplating suicide. Once I was out on my own, I didn't speak to my mom for several years. We eventually reconciled, and by that point they had married. I was a lot bigger than I had been as a young teenager, and had gotten into weightlifting, so he no longer acted like he was going to punch me to make me flinch, much less actually hit me, and we basically avoided each other for the most part. My mother found out that she had stage 4 cancer, and no longer wanted to waste any of the time she had left with him, so she had a lawyer draft up a separation agreement whereby he would receive a set amount of money upon separation, and would have 45 days to retrieve his belongings from the house. He had spent his entire inheritance in 6 months, and then had to sell his mother's house that he grew up in in order to settle his debts shortly before they started dating, and my mother bought the house back from the bank before they married. She allowed him to keep the house, and he moved back into his mother's house. My mother passed away about 9 months after their separation, and despite the agreement had been allowing him to come and get his stuff piecemeal. I put an immediate end to that. He was past the deadline to remove his personal effects, and they were now legally mine to dispose of as I saw fit. I sold his baseball card collection, around $14,000, and his autographed sports memorabilia, roughly $11,000, and also sold all of his woodworking equipment, along with several finished pieces of furniture that he had made, $6,500 I think. I kept his mother's engagement ring, platinum band 3 diamonds roughly 2 carats, wedding band, his coin collection, I also collect coins, and some tools and other odds and ends. Now comes the real fun. Around a month ago I finally saw him at the grocery store. As he was leaving I approached him. I told him I had sold his collections as he was pushing his cart out towards his car. He reacted exactly as I expected. He took a swing at me multiple times. I already had my phone ready to dial 911. Several of these punches missed and the ones that did connect didn't have much effect because he's nowhere near as strong as he was 20 years ago in his 40s, and I no longer a skinny little 15 year old. 
He continued to try to punch me as I spoke to the 911 operator, and was actively ramming his grocery cart into my new Toyota as the police officers pulled into the parking lot. He was arrested for assault, communicating threats, and destruction of property. As a result he lost his job and pension at the local middle school, and because he had never learned how to save money while married to my somewhat wealthy mother ended up having to sell his mother's house because he hired an expensive lawyer thinking he could somehow beat the charges. My nephew, who was on the football team made it well known to his friends that he not only had just been arrested and convicted of assault as well as other charges, but that he had also beat me as a child causing several parents to call for him to resign from refereeing and umpiring for local sports games. My niece and my girlfriend's much younger sister are enrolled at the middle school where he worked, and say that he was not only universally disliked, but when he came up to the school to get his belongings, he made a big scene and ended up hysterically crying as he was leaving. At least that's what they've heard from the kids who were attending summer school at the time. His son, who he was equally abusive towards as a child refused to take him in or help him out so the abusive stepfather ended up having to take a job as a cashier at Walmart so that he could afford the rent on his crappy little trailer in an absolutely awful neighborhood. Even though that Walmart is not the closest Walmart to my house, that is now the only place where I go grocery shopping or to purchase anything that I need. I purposely stand in line longer than I need to just so that he can be the one who has the pleasure of ringing up my purchases. The first time I went through his line he attempted to ring up multiple items more than one time to overcharge me, and when I called him on it, he said that I was mistaken. I asked for a manager, and the manager believed him that it was an accident, but he learned that he can't get away with that. The second time, I made sure to be as nice as possible, and had to ask for a manager because he was overwhelmingly rude. The people in line behind me backed me up, and he got in some trouble for that. Every time I go there and step into line, I see him die a little bit inside, and it gives me such satisfaction. Sometimes I'll say that I'm paying with exact change, and as I'm about to hand him the money I'll say oh. I didn't realize I had, rare coin from his collection, in my pocket. I guess I'll use my credit card. I just sold his expensive ratcheting wrench set, and so on Monday, when he works again, I'm going to go buy my daughter one of their better above ground pools, and as he's ringing it out tell him I know that daughter, is just going to love this pool. It's not like I would have ever used those expensive ratcheting wrenches anyway. Downstairs neighbors wouldn't turn down music, nuked them from orbit. Was suggested to cross post from slash or slash malicious compliance. I was inspired by a recent post to tell my own bad neighbor story. Can't think of a better place to post it. Flashback to 2014. Or so. I moved out on my own in 2013 and moved into an old house converted into a two-floor apartment, directly across from my future in-laws. The downstairs neighbors were loud. Blaring music at all hours, yes, all of the hours, wouldn't cut the grass or take out the trash on our shared schedule. Crappy neighbors but never bothered me directly. The guy was pretty chill when sober and would turn the music down a little when I texted him. He was okay until his girlfriend moved in. Now I'd shouting matches to the mix, and all of the sudden my requests to turn down the music makes him turn it up. I can barely walk on my super thin floor without her banging on the ceiling with a broom. I was okay since I am heavy sleeper and could sleep through anything. My wife moved in, and I quickly found out that she is quite the opposite. Fanon turned at a certain angle in the doorway of the bathroom, door closed halfway, blackout curtains with them taped to the wall so zero light comes through, zero sounds other than the fan, you get the idea. I told her that we can't expect them to remain silent when she's ready for bed, we need to be reasonable, but the wall rattling music needs to stop during the night. She hated it during the day, but I told her there's nothing we can do then, so she would go to her parents' house a lot during the day. I talked to neighbor guy, he said yeah man that's cool, but it turns out the girlfriend wasn't having it, and his attitude then changed to yeah well it's our house, so you can go f yourself if you think you can tell us what to do, and you can move out if you don't like it. Something definitely had to change once she was pregnant, and then the baby came. So I did the only thing I could do. I fought fire with fire, and maliciously complied with the law to the T. I could only report them for noise after 11 pm. I now forget the morning hour when the noise could start, but I believe it was 9 am. My dad has these huge old concert speakers in his garage. Professional grade, black leather bound, 5 feet tall and 3 feet wide, and a pretty nice, vintage stereo slash amp. He has two, but my apartment was so small I sadly only had room for one. 
We replaced our coffee table with this thing, laid face down onto our thin, office carpet. Tired of his crap tunes, I tested this Geneva convention breaking device when they weren't home. Holy cow. I had to take everything down from tables, counters and shelves because they would shake off. I prepared audio files to feed the stereo. I was giddy like a kid with a new Christmas toy. I turned it on when I left for work and got my wife up to send her to her parents. I came home from work and hung out at her parents until it was close to bedtime. They resisted for three days. On day two, I found a pile of manure on my doorstep, but it didn't faze me. I cycle between sign slash saw slash square waves and clashing chords, marching music, Washington Post march on loop, preaching clips, they weren't just atheist, but outspoken anti-Christian, so it was a must, the most stupid songs you could think of, Captain Planet theme song, chicken dance, etc. This poor old house rattled in ways I didn't think possible. The vibrations from the sine wave would make your vision blur. I eventually got a text from him that read sorry man you can stop now. I did not. He needed a few more days to let it sink in. Plus I had so much fun putting it together. They complained to the police and the landlord. There was nothing they could do since I wasn't doing anything wrong. I didn't even hear music during the time of peace to follow. It was so quiet. They would build up their courage and try again every few weeks when I wasn't home, but my wife was. I then showed her how to tame the beast so she could let it loose while I was away. I had to give them a spanking every now and then, but they learned. They were so happy when we moved out. Nice Audi, dude. This happened today. I had to go to Home Depot and saw this shiny, small dicked Audi parked across two parking spaces. I was halfway to the store when I realized I forgot my mask. I went back, got it and started walking back when I saw the 50-something Audi owner getting into his car. Happily, there was a guy collecting carts who'd parked a bunch of them directly in back of his bumper. The employee was taking his time getting them out of the way. I hung back to watch with a big smile on my face. Finally, the guy moved the carts and I saw the reverse lights go on. I walked up to the driver's side bumper, stopped and started looking at my phone. Audi asshole, what the hell are you doing? OP, just inconveniencing you the way you did others with at that park job. AA, huff, puff, mutter. OP, waiting a few extra seconds, really nice Audi, dude. You so deserve that. Exeunt. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and we will see you in the next video.